Hello everybody! Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Today's beer comes from Yards Brewing. This is their Thomas Jefferson uh, Tavern Ale. And guys, I'll be honest with you, I used to buy some of these guys' beers when I first started doing beer reviews, and I kind of found them very transitional. So I haven't bought a whole lot of them. Rico, my brother, sent me uh, this particular version and what it is. It says here on the note he sent, Yards Thomas Jefferson Tavernale English Strong Ale, uh, bottled on 081716. Looks like I'm about to smear off, so he put a sticker on the bottle. And it says it's sold in six pack, 8% ABV, 28 IBUs on this one here, guys. So, uh, and being uh, an English Strong Ale at 8%, uh, can't think of why, you know, you couldn't sell this for a little while. So uh, that's why it's ended up in the fridge as long as it has. Today is the 29th, 28th or 29th of January. Uh, so uh, I want to go ahead and get it out before it got too much older. Uh, we're, we're thinning out the IPAs and the double IPAs. We've about got them all. So uh, we'll be starting into some of the darker beer supporters and the stouts and stuff like that. And uh, start running through some of those. Uh, uh, so there may be a, a few in a row of, uh, of darker beers. And we may even do a wire back a week since I have uh, the 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th and 21st uh, editions of their anniversary beers. So we might do a, a week of them. We'll start off with the 16th and work our way through. So, uh, thinning out the refrigerator just a little bit here, guys, especially since I've been posting two reviews a, a day here recently. So uh, it, we'll get them thinned out where it'll drop by. I'll, I'll end up dropping back to one a day again. Uh, unless my brother Rico sends me another massive beer package. I'm going to try to stay on top of it, though, guys. So let's get on with this one. Uh, Commercial description uh, says here this powerful and complex golden ale pays homage to founding fathers and fellow brewer Thomas Jefferson. Yard brewmaster Tom Keyhole uh, worked closely with Philadelphia's historic city tavern to recreate this recipe employing honey, rye, and wheat just like the beer Jefferson made at Monticello. So, the Monticello is just up the road from here. So, uh, we'll see what this brings. See if they've, uh, they've upped their game and this is a, a, a tasty beer or if I find a still rather transitional type beer. But being 8%, they've uh, upped the ABV on it anyway. So, let's see. I don't know if the guys back in Thomas Jefferson's day was brewing a beer of this magnitude. Maybe so. So, uh, maybe we'll see what Thomas Jefferson was brewing and drinking at the time. Uh, we give you the ABV, the IBUs, and the commercial description, so really there's nothing else to talk about, so let me get this opened up, tell you the cuisine is curry, uh, cheeses are earthy, camembert, fontina, tangy, brick, adam, feta, meats, pork, grilled meat, and salmon, glass bar to pint, becker, non egg tumbler, mug, sign, sidel, I'm using my favorite tulip glass here, guys, and, uh, not recommended for extended salary, less ABVs. See the average range is what they have here. Eight percent, and you can do what you will. I mean, eight percent uh, English strong or American strong. Now it's got American strong out here on uh, rate beer, and Beer Advocate is calling it an English strong now. American English, whatever. Half a finger of head, a uh, nice uh, rich amber color. A lot of bubbles streaming up. Let's put the nose to it. Ah, 
getting a lot of breadiness here and graininess in it. The hops are very subdued, guys. Uh, to me, it's it's more like a an English style with a uh, earthy, herbal, floral type of hop, and they're very subdued right now. And this was put in the bottle according to him on eight. He said eight. Yep, eight, seventeen, sixteen, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This beer is five months old, guys. So if there was any hot presence standing out, it's faded by now. Well, let's dive in. First beer of the day, so let's see what she brings. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Rico. Caramel. Coffee. Some cracker breadiness to the malt. Not a bad beer. I mean, if these boys were drinking this back in the 1700s, they were drinking something decent, I would think. Plus, you know, if Thomas Jefferson was growing his own hops, it would probably have been an English hop, something that come over on the ship. That was before all this super hoppy stuff that was developed and, uh, and, uh, we got all these super up in your face, like a Pacific Northwest hop with the pine and the citrus, I mean, the citrusiness and pineapple and grapefruit and all those things were developed and, and uh, genetically uh, uh, grown stuff. So uh, this is probably the type of hop they would have used, uh, more of an English style, and the size, golden, tetanang, some of that earthy floral uh, hops. Uh, so. I would think they probably used an English hop in this uh, to get it closer to what he would have brewed. So, yeah, not bad. It's not, there's no IPA or a, a double IPA by any means, but decent. I mean, if I was if I was born and was wanting to drink beer back in the 1770s or whenever, they, I could deal with this most definitely. Tasty beer for what it is. I mean, I don't really consider it an American strong ale because the American strong ale version is, uh, is going to be a little more hoppier than this. But like I said, this beer is five months old, so those hops would have faded. Uh, so I apologize to Rico for keeping this as long, but that's more likely where they were going with this. Because uh, Thomas Jefferson didn't his have, have his hands on any. Uh, uh, citrusy hops. Uh, he didn't have any mosaic. He didn't have any cascade. He didn't have any uh, Simcoe or none of these super hopped up hop strains back then. So uh, more of the English style, I would think that's what they were probably trying or were, were limited to brewing. So, but of course uh, they did hop up some stuff to get it to India from you know, on the boat around there. So uh, I can just imagine they just hopped it up with more Tetanating size and uh, Golding's hops and stuff. So uh, it, uh, that to me would just gave it a more earthy, more herbal uh, uh, flavor to it instead of uh, kicking the hop profile up to what we're used to on the American side of hops. Uh, especially, especially, you know, especially since uh, what we're getting now in the IPAs and the, the double IPAs that are super hopped. Uh, all right, guys, let's uh, let's uh, sip on this for a little bit and see where it ends up. Not a bad beer. Uh, I would. I can picture them drinking something like this, so, not bad, I'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm back, got just a little left here. Alcohol is very well hidden in this beer. Like I said a little while ago, uh, if I was Thomas Jefferson and I was brewing this beer, I would be damn proud of it, to be honest with you. And if I was been alive in the 1700s or the eight, early 1800s or whatever, and not having all this hopped up stuff that uh, that we are used to as hop heads, uh, I'd have been proud. I'd have, I would have loved to have drank this beer then. This this would have been an excellent beer for that time period. I, and like I said, I may go against the grade on, on 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 everybody on this one, but I think this would have been a tremendous beer 
uh, if I was brewing it in the 1700s or even the 1800s. Uh, very tasty. I mean, uh, it's not got that huge hot profile that all of us like nowadays. But, and I do consider this an English style because that would have been the hops they would have been using and growing over here then because nothing had been developed by then other than the European style hop. So, uh, as far as that goes, and I'm going to grade it like that, uh, I'm fairly impressed with, with what this beer is. And if they actually use his recipe uh, and, and brewed this, uh, I think it's an extremely well done beer. Uh, like I said, I may go against the grade on this, guys, uh, but uh, I find it very enjoyable if it's an authentic recipe that he used. So, uh, I'd have, I'd have been happy to roll into a tavern and, and, and sip on this stuff. And uh, could have got shit faced on it. And then you get back on your horse and it would have been no DUIs and you're not going to run into nobody else. And and most of the time the horses, you can just, they knew where home was. You just jumped on them and clicked your heels and, uh, and they moseyed on back to the ranch or wherever you were staying. So, uh, I found it delightful, guys. Final show. Probably not something that I would buy nowadays, but if it's an authentic recipe, I find it very, very nice, and I would have drank this beer then, no doubt. To me, guys, and they did put a date on it, even though it's easily smudged off, I'm grading it on what it is and what I've been told and read about this beer and if it's an authentic recipe, I think it's an A beer. I do. And I'm going to give it that. I'm going to give it the A minus. Uh, I would have drank this uh, religiously if I'd have been uh, around at that time. So uh, for me guys, I'm going to give it a 92. I think it's that good uh, for the style. Not, like I said, not something I would probably run out and buy because I like myself a little hoppier now. And uh, if I'm drinking a strong ale, I like it a little heavier than that, than an 8%er. But it is tasty. I mean, I, I can't find any faults if this is what Thomas Jefferson brewed. So, uh, over to Beer Advocate, they say 85 in a very good range. It is 85. It is a very good beer. Uh, but I think it's a little better than an 85. Uh, you got to realize what they're doing or where they're going with this beer. Over to Rate Beer, Rate Beer says 78 overall, 43 in the style. So... And I tell you this all the time, guys, unless it blows these guys' hair back or the socks off or whatever, uh, they're not impressed. But just realize what they're, where they were going with this beer. They were trying to brew something that, would, that Thomas Jefferson would have brewed back then. And I think it's a very tasty beer for that period. So, uh, final check-in. We'll run over to Untapped. They have it at 3.61. Uh, tasty beer to me, guys. Uh, and I would consider this a good transitional beer. If you're into drinking the macros, Bud Miller, Coors, or whatever, and you want to taste something that's not going to have a super heavy hot profile or a massive bitterness, this would be a great one to jump into an 8%er uh, from the typical 5 or whatever you're drinking in the macros to have something brewed with some quality ingredients and uh, have a little bit of ABV and, and not going to blow your palate out of your mouth. And an 8% is going to get you in a hammer lane a lot faster than a Budweiser. <laughs> so, very tasty as far as I'm concerned for what they were doing, where they were going with this beer. So, if you've had this one from uh, Yards Brewing, this is their Thomas Jefferson's Tavern Ale. Let me know what you think. I'm impressed. If he was brewing this then, I would have drank it. No doubt about it. Alright guys, uh, I'm going to wrap it up on this one. Let me know if you've had it. Come on back tomorrow. Let's dig something out of the fridge. See you then.